there's a very common assumption people make when they think about electric vehicles, and it's uh, this idea that the entire problem still exists and sits inside the battery itself. Energy density and chemistry, the range, charge speed, thermal runaway, as if uh, basically the future of EVs is simply waiting for a single technological breakthrough. So they, it's, you know, it's been kind of reduced so much, I think. But what CATL just did in a place called Riyadh uh, suggests something very, very different. And I think it suggests that battery technology is no longer the main bottleneck and actually probably its reliability after sales support, uh, to, to be precise. And uh, the ability to keep these systems running predictably and also in the real world in very harsh temperatures, like very, very hot, very, very cold, hot in Riyadh, for example, under stress, for many, many years, uh, it's a very big deal. So you can build a battery that performs very, very well in a lab uh, and it will be impressive. But if you can keep millions of batteries, and I do mean literally millions of batteries operating safely at 50 degrees plus Celsius, along with, uh, you know, across long distances in a desert uh, with fleets and uh, trucks and vans and logistics and Amazon, that sort of stuff, grid storage, commercial users, that's a completely different problem. And that's the problem CATL is now clearly trying to solve. On January 11th, just the other day, CATL opened the Middle East's largest new energy aftermarket facility in Riyadh. Not a factory or a showroom, it's an after sales and life cycle service center. So it's a repair center basically when things go wrong, you can take it there. Over 7,000 square meters dedicated to diagnostics, uh, maintenance, refurbishment, training, recycling, and also logistics. I think that was all of the things. Uh, that tells you something very, very, very important about how the industry, the EV industry is maturing. So this is, I think this is a word that's gonna be kind of, throughout this video, the EV industry is maturing. So early on, EV adoption was constrained by technology. Batteries were very, very expensive, unreliable, heavy, uh, limited, hard to come by. Uh, that phase is largely over. So now batteries are very, very available. Today's constraints are operational. So what happens after the sale? And this will all make sense to you in a minute. I think just in a couple of minutes time, you'll get it what I'm getting at. So what happens in five years or seven years or 10 years? What happens when something goes wrong? If you're operating in Saudi Arabia, those questions make a very, very big difference because it's, you know, you might not be able to buy a diesel Toyota anymore. It needs to be something electric in 10 years time. So can we need to figure out how to make a battery survive plus 50 degrees Celsius. So we're talking about ambient temperatures pushing 50 degrees, uh, long intercity routes as well. So under load, so the batteries are, you know, there's some resistance in the batteries that's raising the temperatures up. Uh, heavy commercial usage, there'll be trucks and vans and that sort of stuff, high thermal stress high utilization and these conditions expose weaknesses incredibly quickly uh, just like in the very harshest of winters you know that also is very very hard to when you basically freeze a battery it's a bit of an issue for the battery so uh, not just in the battery chemistry but also in the service items uh, and the training as well and the spare parts availability to get them into the middle of a desert and response time you need to actually have people able to fix them so just ha having an issue with any electric car i mean um, i did some videos about this recently it's really hard to have the correct people with the correct training in a specific place at a at a rate you know where there's going to be enough issues to that will be happening to have all the parts shipped to that place logistically it's a it's a pain it's not not good at all so the really big thing is to try and avoid that at all so that's why they're not just going for efficiency in the factories in china they're really just trying to make it so that every battery is basically just perfect not just the chemistry but the electronics and the, the welds and the bms and the resistors and everything literally everything the chips everything so yeah if an ev fleet is down for days because of a battery issue uh, and they can't diagnose that battery issue locally, electrification stops being uh, like a, a discussion. Uh, basically, people are not gonna be very impressed with it and it starts to be a financial liability and that is where this company, Ning Service, comes in. So what CATL is doing here is effectively saying that we're not just going to sell batteries into the Middle East and hope for the best. We're gonna go and build uh, the scaffolding that makes electrification viable at scale in that region, which will probably face more issues because it is plus 50 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna make a place to, to fix the batteries that we've sold them. I think that's really, really great. I think that's pretty chipper, honestly. That really doesn't exist in too many places really by other brands. Uh, full life cycle, 
diagnostics, health monitoring, repair as well, instead of full replacement, they can actually take a battery part and repair it uh, with the right training and that sort of stuff. Uh, local technicians trained on CATL systems, uh, they'll be warehousing a big stock of parts, uh, recycling on site as well to some degree, I'm not really sure how much recycling, that's a big process, and importantly, speed. It means people can get a, something maybe repaired within a week or two rather than six months. Because reliability is not just about whether something fails, it's about how quickly you can respond when it fails. Uh, so therefore that, that sort of, this is a very big deal for them. Now there's another layer to this as well that doesn't really get talked about much, almost never really, uh, but it matters enormously. Warranty, warranty risk. What happens when things do go wrong and how much are we paying for that warranty? Uh, you know, how much is the price will be bulked up basically on every battery they sell to cover the warranty claims. Every manufacturer builds in a buffer into their pricing, a quiet premium that exists purely to cover expected failures and replacements, uh, downtime, uncertainty, uh, and depending on the brand and the product, that buffer can be 2%, can be 3%, can be 4%. I think 3.8 is one I've heard. That's one of the highest. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very expensive, I think, actually. And that doesn't sound like a lot until you scale it at millions of units. If a company like CATL sell, you know, 6 million batteries this year, and of course they'll sell more, but if it's 6 million units this year, well, that's a lot. <laughs> Basically, everyone's paying a little bit of money. They're going to be profiting a lot of money and uh, they don't want to also repair, I don't know, 20,000 batteries this year so if they could make that just go away it's a win for everyone if they can just make a product better and the more confident a company becomes in the real world reliability of its products then the less of that buffer is needed so therefore batteries will become cheaper simply because they're more reliable and so it is actually kind of hard to uh it's almost imponderable really to put a price on that but they they will be able to do that because they have all the data of, of you know how many warranty claims they're facing every year but if you know your batteries can be diagnosed early and repaired locally uh, or refurbished rather than actually replaced and monitored continuously you really don't need to price in as much because of fear so reliability doesn't just reduce breakdowns it reduces cost and builds trust and uh, that, yeah that's how companies like CATL can make their products cheaper without really cutting the quality not by raising uh, racing to the bottom of, on materials uh, but by shrinking the uncertainty factor so this is one of the reasons Chinese EV and also battery companies have been able to put, keep pushing down prices while others are struggling they're not just improving chemistry they're improving systems and reliability uh, through things like data service networks feedback loop Ning service has already supported more than 6 million electric vehicles globally. CATL operates 1. I don't know, 1,200 service stations across 76 countries and 73 spare parts warehouses worldwide. And they've certified over 9,700 after-sales professionals in some stuff. I don't know what they've certified them in, but they've certainly, it could be sales. I don't know, I have no idea but they've certified them in some stuff. So presumably some of them can repair a battery, even though I'm sure it's very, very hard to repair a lot of the batteries that we have in a lot of cars, not all of them, but when, when you see a, a teardown of a BYD battery, it's very, very hard, it seems, to remove a cell safely without causing collateral damage and then putting a new cell in, especially if it's in the middle. So I'm sure they'll have got a solution for this or how they will do it. I'm sure they have. And uh, CATL might be able to repair their batteries and easy, and, you know, more simply than BYD, for example, with the Blade batteries. I'm not so sure. That's for them to know and for us to find out over the years. And infrastructure is really what makes uh, a technology stable, inevitable, and a little bit boring. I think, and Saudi Arabia's vision 2030 targets 30% EV adoption in Riyadh by the end of the decade. So that is not going to be achieved by early adopters of buying a few premium cars, you know. It's going to be achieved by fleets or logistic operators, utilities, commercial users, uh, trusting that these systems will not be collapsing under any pressure and you know, just things being built well and the correct brands being brought in with the correct products. Energy storage is the same story. Solar and storage assets are long-term investments, 10 years or 15 years, something like that. Sometimes more actually, I've seen. And uh, their value depends less on peak performance and more on predictable operation, which I think is, it's a, it's a really, it's a lot of people can learn from this, honestly. And also monitoring safety and maintenance. Ning Service, which is the company, of course, which is doing this, positions CATL not just as a supplier, but as a long-term partner in keeping those assets alive and profitable for more than 10 years or 15 years. And that's the real, 
you know, that's the real news, I think, here. That's the real shift. CATL is moving from selling batteries as products to managing them as assets to millions of people. When you do that, you gain something extremely powerful. You gain a lot of data, a lot of con control, a lot of trust, uh, brand recognition, and the ability to lower costs over time instead of raising them. So this Riyadh center is not just about the Middle East. It's a kind of, it's like a, a symbolic thing, really. It's a signal to the rest of the world. It's um, kind of CATL saying that the next phase of electrification won't be won by who has the flashiest battery or the slightly better energy density chemistry but by who can basically keep systems just running you know just like a 1990s toyota will just work safely cheaply reliably every button will always work every day for 20 years in the most demanding environments on earth and once you solve the problem in Riyadh basically everywhere else is easier than Riyadh because it's 50 degrees ambient it's just awful <laughs> It's really, really hot. Uh, so yeah, I'm really curious to know what you think. Do you see after sales and reliability as the real bottleneck now? I think I do, actually. I think there's a couple of bottlenecks, but this is definitely one of them, reliability and, and uh, solving issues and, and parts, supplies and things like that when things go wrong. Or do you think battery tech still has another another way to go, another, another party trick up its sleeve? So Maybe it's sodium ion, maybe the sodium ion thing will really change things, but there's obviously a lot of components like electronics and the BMS and the, the cooling and that sort of stuff, all built in around a battery to stop a battery failing. So it all needs to you know, work collaboratively. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ben Alexander. Thank you to the people on screen now. These are the channel members. Really appreciate your time.